It's not that strange to see a happy, healthy three-legged dog these days. After all, pups can be pretty resilient and often forget they're missing a limb altogether. But what if they're missing not one, but two legs? I bet you never thought you'd see the day. And speaking of things you never thought you'd see, I've got a whole bunch of them coming right up in this episode of Things You Will See For The First Time In Your Life. If you're one of the 3.5 to 6.1% of the world's population that suffer from arachnophobia, you probably think spiders are just terrifying, heartless beasts. But you're wrong. They're not heartless at all. In case you have absolutely no idea what you're looking at, this is the spiny orb weaver spider of Costa Rica, and that weird pulsating crack you see on its back is actually its heart beating through its body. You see, spider hearts are located in a rather vulnerable position on the front dorsal side of the abdomen, in a muscular cavity called the pericardial sinus. The tube-shaped heart pumps from back to front, forcing blood through the bifurcating aorta and into the arteries that feed the legs and central nervous system. If you're able to get close enough to a spider, like YouTuber Quawar Power has in these clips, you'll be able to see their heart beating. Now, just think about stopping that teeny tiny heart next time you decide to kill a spider. When spiders of the world heard that humans didn't know they had big, beating hearts, they started to cry in unison. But now you can pay reparations to spider kind for the harsh way we've been treating them at the low, low cost of liking this video, smashing that subscribe button, and tickling that little bell icon. That way, you'll get all the amazing content right into your subscription box, and you'll please the eight-legged freaks in the process. You know what to do. Now, here's a question for you. How do you trap 42 wild hogs at once? Well, see for yourself. This ingenious device is a supersized boar trap. It works by tempting the wild hogs in with the promise of food, and then dropping the gates, which are usually triggered by some sort of tripwire system, once the animals are all obliviously grazing inside. As you can see in this chaotic clip, the boars don't react too well to the noise of the gates dropping and instantly start running around like toddlers on a sugar high. You might think this seems harsh, but wild pigs are actually a destructive, invasive species that can destroy property and even injure people. In fact, they cause about $52 million in damages every year in Texas alone. It's no surprise Texans are getting inventive with the way they control the problem. And Muddy Ruckus Hog Trapping, who was called in to remove these feral hogs from a 900-acre ranch, is really showing off their creative engineering skills here. Remember the adorable two-legged dog I gave you a glimpse of at the start of the video? Allow me to give you a formal introduction. This is Deuce the Almighty, a resilient two-year-old Sharpe with a real lust for life. Now, unsurprisingly, Deuce wasn't born this way. After he entered the world in May 2019, his mom, Penny, became really anxious and stressed after becoming a first-time parent. And when Deuce was just three days old, disaster struck when Penny broke two of his legs in an accident while cleaning him. Deuce was then taken into care by his owner, Jen, who was then told that there was nothing they could do to fix him. But Jen didn't give up that easy. She got the opinion of her regular vet who asked her one thing. How do you feel about a two-legged dog? At first, Jen wasn't sure how little Deuce would adapt to having just one front leg and one back leg. But as you can see here, he has no trouble hopping around and happily playing with his canine companions, just like any other dog. Deuce is a big fan of any outdoor adventures, and he even loves to swim.
A huge shout out to Jen for getting in touch and sharing Deuce's amazing story with us. He may only have two legs, but this little pupper is one almighty inspiration. Do any of you guys have anything weird, wonderful, or downright amazing you think is worth sharing with the world? Get in touch at clips at beamazed.com and you'll earn yourself a shout out if it gets featured. And if we like your clip enough, we might even buy it too. So what are you waiting for? Now, if I handed you a huge chunk of wood and a chainsaw, what could you make? A bunch of smaller blocks of wood is probably the most common outcome, unless you're Matthew Crabb, who whipped up this immense dragon sculpture instead. To create this totally wicked carving, Crabb starts off with an initial profile sketch that acts sort of like a roadmap as he starts cutting away along the outline. From there, he masterfully begins cutting sections out, as details like the dragon's horns, tongue, and spines take shape. Next, he carves the chest plate, muscle shapes, skin patterns, and face details. And after staining the wood, he uses a flap sander to sand the outer edges, leaving the dark color in the crevices, and then repeats the process with a lighter stain to add even more texture. To build layers, Crab burns hundreds of tiny dots into the skin pattern, finishes up with one more sanding, and voila, you got yourself one badass dragon sculpture. Now that's what I call talent. The rainforest is populated by all sorts of colorful critters, from the blue morpho butterfly to the poison dart frog. But not every animal is trying to stand out. Let's test your eyesight quickly, shall we? Can you spot the lizard in this clip? The more eagle-eyed among you probably spotted him right away. But if you needed a little extra help, just check this out. If there's one way to give the game away during a game of hide-and-seek, waving a big, bright orange flag around will do it. This crafty little critter is the Amazon Bark Anole, which was filmed in the rainforest of Yasuni National Park in Ecuador by wildlife photographer and rainforest enthusiast David Weiler. This small and graceful lizard blends perfectly with the bark of this tree, until it extends the bright orange dewlap attached to its throat. What a flamboyant little show-off! You ever wonder what the Earth would look like from space? Now for most of us, finding out firsthand is nothing more than a pipe dream. But thanks to bona fide astronauts like Major Tim Peake from the European Space Agency, and wonders of modern-day technology, us Earthlings can still get a sneak peek at life above the clouds. This eye-opening time-lapse clip was filmed while Major Peak was flying from North Africa over Turkey towards Russia in 2016. All those bright flashes you see as the Earth passes by are lightning strikes in different areas. In case you didn't know, about a hundred lightning bolts strike the Earth's surface every second. That's about eight million strikes per day and three billion each year. Makes you think twice about carrying metal umbrellas and hanging around solitary trees, doesn't it? Who doesn't love cake? Sure, a diet consisting of nothing but the sweet stuff is probably not so great for your body, but it's a surefire way to brighten up even the darkest day. And after getting a piece of this cake, you'd be on cloud nine. Whoa, that is one monster slice. And this isn't just any old type of cake. It's a giant castella cake, which is a traditional street food in Taiwan. This pillow-like sponge cake is so fluffy when baked, some call it jiggly cake or bouncy cake. As you can see in this video taken by street food enthusiast Mogu Mogu, the cake is baked in an enormous slice that looks like an edible mattress that is then carefully measured, sliced, and packaged up for sale. Oh, 
Oh, how satisfying is it just watching each cotton soft slice being heat stamped with the shop's name. Taiwanese castella is made with low protein cake flour instead of regular bread flour, which means less gluten is formed as the batter is mixed, and less gluten equals a softer, fluffier, more souffle like texture. Ugh, anyone else hungry all of a sudden? Now, not many people consider themselves insect fans. Even the smallest bugs can be totally annoying, but I bet you never knew you could turn all that annoyance into pure entertainment with the help of a simple pen. When one man discovered a tiny mite crawling across his piece of paper, he was amazed to see that it refused to cross any line he drew. But things got even trickier for the bug when he decided to draw a circle around it, trapping it inside an inky prison. Eventually, the mite did come to its senses and break free. But what was holding it in there in the first place? Well, there are a couple of theories. The most likely reason behind the mite's frantic escape attempts is due to the smelly chemicals released by ink in the pen. When the bug approaches the freshly drawn line, their instincts instantly tell them to retreat. And besides that, just imagine a giant pen head the size of your body coming down from the sky and covering your surrounding area in thick, sticky mud. You know, you probably wouldn't want to cross that line either. How long do you think you can hold your breath underwater for? Most people make it about two minutes tops. But uh, what if we throw a giant boulder into the mix? Anyone else feel like they're going to pass out while watching that? This utterly hardcore sport is known as rock running, which is supposed to improve endurance and breath holding skills. As you can see, it involves picking up an enormous rock and running along the ocean floor while holding your breath. The badass woman in this clip is avid Instagrammer and photographer Addie Reimer from Hawaii, where the tradition is thought to have originated. Rock running is particularly popular with surfers because it falls under a type of endurance known as high heart rate hold, which means holding your breath underwater while your body is put under stress and your heart rate is elevated. Would you give this sport a go? Now, everyone knows that the largest creature in the world is the Antarctic blue whale, right? These utterly enormous marine mammals can measure almost 100 feet in length and weigh up to 400,000 pounds. That's about the same as 33 adult elephants. It's hard to visualize just how big that really is until you see something like this. This, my friends, is the skull of a blue whale displayed at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, complete with puny humans for scale, of course. The skull alone measures a whopping 19 feet. That's almost three times the size of my ex-girlfriend. Part of the reason why blue whales can grow so darn big is because the water partly frees their bodies from the constraints of gravity which allows them to evolve heavy bodies that they couldn't possibly support on land. Uh, wait, so if I evolve gills and live in the ocean, will I get more jacked? We all know cats are graceful creatures, especially when compared with clumsy dogs. But have you ever paid special attention to the way they walk? Well, check it out. Notice anything interesting about this clip? If you look closely, you'll see that little kitty's hind paws fall perfectly in the same prints made by its front paws. This behavior is known as direct registering, also known as perfect walking, which is exhibited by all felines, including domestic cats. Direct registering doesn't just make them look like super suave models walking on the catwalk, but helps to minimize noise and visible tracks while also stabilizing their footing. So that's what makes them so darn stealthy. They may be tiny, but ants are impressive creatures that can work together to create some truly incredible homes. It's just a shame they're underground so we can't appreciate them in all their glory. But there are ways to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. Thank you. 
This incredible time lapse created by Green Time Lapse on YouTube proves just how determined these puny insects are when they have a goal in mind. At first, the stretch of untouched sand in front of them seems pretty daunting, but in just a few days they've carved out intricate tunnels aplenty. Ant nests are interlaced with many chambers which are connected by tunnels like these ones. The small rooms are used for nurseries, storing food, and even resting places for the worker ants, which move the larvae up to rooms near the top of the nest during the day to keep them warmer. Now just imagine them all wearing tiny mining hats while digging through the sand. Aww. Have you ever come across a creature so strange it stopped you dead in your tracks? Wait. Why does it look like this caterpillar has a human face? It's almost like this big fat bug is looking directly into my soul. Well, before you start to panic, I should probably tell you that those huge, unblinking eyes and pursed lips aren't actually the caterpillar's real face. Instead, they're just markings located on the back of its head. You've probably guessed already, but this is a pretty smart defense tactic used to deter natural predators like birds from eating them. After all, caterpillars are like nature's hot dogs. A number of different species of caterpillar have evolved this special trait, including the elephant hawk moth and spice bush swallowtail. But can any caterpillar enthusiasts out there identify this weird little fella? If I were a hungry bird, and I saw that terrifying face staring back at me, you know, I think I'd fly off too. If I asked you to think of things you might find in the desert, uh, what would spring to mind? Sand dunes, cactuses, scorching heat? Something you'd probably never think of are these vast crop circles of what looks like lush, green grass. But they actually exist, and they weren't left there by aliens. These huge green circles appear in deserts all around the world, from the valley of Wadi Rum near Saudi Arabia to the Nevada desert. And they can even be seen from space. But what are they? Green circles in the desert actually indicate tracts of agriculture supported by a clever method known as center pivot irrigation. This system pumps water under pressure into a tubular arm from the central source. The arm, known as a gantry, is anchored by a central pivot, hence the name, and slowly rotates over the area to be irrigated, producing the circular patterns in the process. Although field sizes vary, these circles are usually around one kilometer in diameter. When viewed from above, the darker colors usually indicate fields where crops like wheat and alfalfa are grown. On the other hand, lighter colors can indicate fields that have been harvested recently fields that have just been planted, or fields that have been taken out of production. UFologists, eat your hearts out. There's nothing quite as heartwarming as watching animal rescue videos. And back in 2015, the story of one stranded orca near the village of Hartley Bay in British Columbia really pulled on the heartstrings. A group of orcas had been hunting after a seal, and in the thrill of the chase, one of the juvenile transient orcas accidentally beached herself on the rocks. Thankfully, the kind-hearted team at Cetacea Lab, an orca protection foundation, received a radio call from a colleague telling them what happened and reacted swiftly. When the team arrived, the tide was already going down, so they had to use a water pump and a hose, as well as buckets of water to keep the orca calm and breathing. At first, she seemed panicked, but once she realized that the humans were trying to return her to the water, she relaxed and allowed them to help her. They managed to keep her alive for about 6 hours, from 8am to around 4pm, until the tide started to rise again. The little orca started to call out as she lifted her tail to check the level of the water, and once it was safe to do so, she was able to break free and swim off like a bullet to rejoin her family. Without these kind humans, she may never have made it. Hey, I'm not crying, you are. 
Which of these things amazed you the most? Why not go ahead and check out the previous episodes in this series? It's called Binge Watching and I encourage it. And don't forget to send your own clips in to clips at beamazed.com. And thanks for watching, guys.